Hi everybody, Jeff Simon here for Social Flight, and we are at the end of yep. Lithra's uh, break here, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So, uh, man, sad day. We have accomplished so, so much okay. in a relatively short period of time mm -hmm. uh, with tons of work on the Mustang. We're gonna give you a tour through all of that. What do you think about your, uh, your spending winter break here working on the Mustang? Uh, I thought it was great. I, I think I learned a lot just about working on aircraft and how aircraft is built for redundancy and just learned a lot about trying to figure out different things like <laughs> pipe glass and uh, hose fittings and it was a lot of fun. You did an amazing, amazing job. Seriously, yep. fantastic work. Uh, you know, Lither spends a lot of time working on uh, automotive rebuilds mm -hmm. uh, back in with his family in yep. Sri Lanka and uh, taking some of that talent and also what you do, you work on the, uh, was it high efficiency? Yeah, like? super mileage team. At super mileage team at UMass. UMass. Yep. Uh, so uh, a lot of work there that mm -hmm. translates into a lot of real handy mechanical abilities in the work that you've been doing here on the Mustang. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, what, what do you think? What was the biggest thing that you learned during this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it was, uh, it was definitely the fiberglass tips. I oh, really? Think, yeah. Um, just applying fiberglass in different ways and manipulating yeah. it. it was Kind of learning the hard way. We the taught ourselves way. our own techniques for exactly. some of that. Yeah. And obviously that the build itself is not an A plus B plus no. C kind of thing. Like no. there's a lot of problem solving. Exactly, yeah. I thought, Which is, yeah, I thought the tips were going to be just putting them on place and <laughs> instead it end up being a month-long project exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> no but that's only because we wanted so much perfection exactly, in what we yeah. did and we changed a lot of things so as always we're always doing a yep. lot of custom work and that changed everything yep. so uh, let's do a little tour of some of the work that we did now the first thing is hard for the camera to get down to but we showed it in one of the videos and that is down underneath here uh, we have the, this entire oil cooler area and uh, we'll show a little bit of footage of that and, um, uh, and, and so that was really, really cool because yeah. we had to do the oil cooler as well as the radiator, route the lines and get them up around the wing fairing area for that. So um, what do you think about that phase? So I think that was, that was my first project I did. Yeah. And uh, by far the easiest compared <laughs> to what we did. But I think I learned a lot about just fitting in fittings yeah. and routing all the lines and yeah, making sure the lines don't fall off the plane and make sure that everyone's safe inside. Perfect, so. yeah. So a lot of the things that we did over the past, what, five weeks, something yep. like that, o over all this time had to do with planning because I know that uh, sometimes it seems like we're not making a lot of progress. We actually are doing a ton. And what it is is getting things set up so that all the dominoes fall and we can go and put it all into place. Exactly. And that's very, very true when we come to the firewall. So let's take a look forward here and let's go over to the firewall area. Now we've got, we've got quite a bit going on here at the, at the firewall of the aircraft. So let's take a, take a look at this. So um, why don't you take us through the different things here? Cause there's a lot going on here. Yeah, so with the firewall, I first started with um, mounting the manifolds. Mm -hmm. I don't think you guys can see it, but there's manifolds behind. Uh, uh, so these manifolds uh, come up to the expansion tank, go, yep. go in, back to the radiator. Uh, go has it has a coolant temperature sensor as well. Yep, um, and that's the heater, that's right? The heater, the heater cores the heater in there. Core the oil here. lines are in there. Exactly. Everything is behind that section, and it all comes here on the firewall because we're really getting ourselves prepared to just mount the engine yep. and have it all work. And so, um, tell us a little bit about some of the components that you put on here and how we figured it out. Yeah. So after the manifolds, I put on the expansion tank. I put on the uh, the fill tank for the coolant, mm -hmm. like the um, overflow. Yeah. The overflow tank. Yeah. I put the fuel pressure regulator on, um, and then the fuel pressure regulator goes back. The bypass goes back to the tanks. Right. But it also goes into the the um, the fuel rails. Right. The engine. And I put a summit. Um, yeah, uh, so we've got our filter. fuel filter all the way up. It we've got the fuel flow, flow sensor. fuel flow sensor, of course, yep. that goes uh, onto the uh, Bendix King and JPI mm -hmm. uh, engine monitor. Yep. Um, and you know, one of the things that's also part of this is we did a lot of figuring out for the computer yep. and the harness. And I'm going to reach over and grab this, but you know, this entire harness that you see here 
is ready for the engine to bolt on now. It's mm -hmm. all done, yep. and it's all been wired up to the computer, unlocked, everything set up. We even loaded the program. Yep. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff that's just yep. ready to drop in now, mm -hmm. which is really, really exciting. Yep. Um, the other thing which we spend a lot of time on here were, and we've talked about this before, were our lines, our control uh, cables from McFarlane for our engine. This is uh, on this side is for uh, our prop throttle. governor. Yep. And on the other side, uh, throttle. Exactly. And again, these had to be sized exactly right to fit what those mounting points are going to exactly. be on the engine. And yep. it, it really, really worked out well. I want to give a shout out to uh, John Cowan and Chris Simon and Randy Williams there that actually built these cables. Mm -hmm. yep. They did a fantastic job and we would not have been able to make all of this work yep. without that. And it gave us a lot of flexibility. The Titan design has solid rods, which uh, work well, especially if you're using the LS3. But in our case, using yep. the L33 engine, exactly. we really want to have the flexibility of using these cables cables and um, and it, it's just it just works out really really well so um, let's see why don't we where why don't you go that way we're gonna go around and uh, I'm gonna have Lithra show you what he did over on this side with the actual controls so how did you hook all this up uh, so as you guys saw we ran the um, control cables through through the firewall and station 2 and stuff and then uh, I built a bracket that sits right here uh, where I fed all the control cables through and put rod ends under the quadrant. Um, overall, I think it looks great. Um, yeah, it work, works, works really works, well. Works really good. Um, yeah, really nice cables as well. It's it, yeah, it's all it's all just coming and in, coming into place. I, I love the way it's all uh, coming together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it moves really slowly, uh, smoothly, and can, and and just uh, just ties both of those together, and it's just rock solid. Mm -hmm. And now let's uh, go back a little bit here. There's another thing that we had you do, and that had to do with the fill line that's uh, actually here on the tank. So, tell me a little bit about this change, because when we we had a right angle when you started here. Yeah, before we had a uh, we had a right angle. It was sort of like a PVC. Uh, it was sort of like a PVC for ninety degree angle, mm -hmm. uh, which we thought wasn't good just for like filling fuel and yeah. all of the back backsplash and stuff. So we decided to put a, sort of like a radiator rubber hose kind of thing. Like a nice smooth nice ninety. Smooth, uh, nice smooth sweeping ninety degree, uh, which is better for fuel. Uh, pumping fuel and stuff. So Excellent. That was one of the things we did. And then we'll move back a little further in our build and uh, we come to the dorsal fin. Take us through a little bit from the dorsal fin perspective here. So the uh, the dorsal fin was was one of the hardest parts. No, not the hardest parts, but we had to make a lot of modifications at the front. Yeah. The front and the back. If you look at this leading edge here, so here's something interesting, you know, on, on the dorsal fin, these are usually metal yep. on, on the Titans. Mm -hmm. And we had Titan make a version out of fiberglass for us because we're hiding ant antennas underneath. We really want to make sure that they can actually radiate yep. and all of that works. What that meant is that at the front, we had a big hole at the back. It didn't totally fit because this was just laid over a metal piece. Yep. And yet, you sculpted this gorgeous nose onto this. How did you do that? So, it, it all started with a blob of the fiberglass filler stuff. And I just I just got sanding by hand and I got the shape down. And like, once I got the shape down, it was, it was good because I got to just, just make it look better. And it looks absolutely looks fantastic. Really and that's that stuff that's like kitty hair. It's like, yeah, but, you know, fiberglass is, is, is blended in with it and, exactly. and it comes across. And uh, we also use that technique that we talked about with, with laying down packing tape yep. and then putting that in, putting the part on, and then it, it mated. And then you just do a little trimming and it's just a perfect, perfect fit. Exactly. So now there isn't a, a wide open hole here. So yeah. It's all covered by the fiberglass filler. Yeah. Wow. All right. Let's go to the tail and look at what took most of the time. All right. Let's come on over here. This is where you spent 
so, yeah. so much of your time. Yep. And it's just about being a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. That's really what yep. it was. I mean, it's not like this stuff wouldn't work yep. out of the box, but man, you just took out the tiniest ripple. Yep. Everything is yep. just perfect. Mm -hmm. And also we had to locate all the slots because you're on hinges. And so things have to move. So exactly. walk us through some of the things that you did. So um, with the horizontal stabilizer uh, tips, it was we, we ran into a lot of problems with bowing and uh, clearance with the front tip. So it was a lot of um, filling and then sanding back, making sure it, it fits great and there's no bowing. And it's absolutely and it, it fits, perfect it fits now. It's really good. And Just absolutely perfect. Yep. I mean, there were things like when you talk about the top of the rudder and the vertical stabilizer, yep. they call out in the drawing and they say, ideally, this should be a line that goes there that's at five degrees. Yep. So it matches the angle of the turtle, turtle. deck. Yep. Tell me, how many degrees is that tip once you're done? It's five, it's 4.9. It's Oh no, come on. I know it's five degrees. It, I put it, it on. It's five degrees. It moves, <laughs> it moves between 4.9 and five, but it's five degrees. <laughs> It's, it's absolutely fantastic and and so it really came out perfect uh, there's a ton of little things that we didn't even include in this video that got done as part of all of this um, uh, just so many small things that, that bring us a lot closer to finishing hopefully yep. you will come back, we'll back on your yeah. breaks yep. and uh, we'll uh, you, you'll find progress and yep. we'll keep getting this thing done mm -hmm. All right. Well, for Social Flight, I'm Jeff Simon. This is Lithra. Thank you so, so much uh, for uh, watching us. And, and you can continue to see more builds here on our channel. And be sure to subscribe as well. Be sure to check out Social Flight's app for mobile, Apple, and Android devices. We've got tens of thousands of aviation events and destinations. Our Fly to Win Challenge, where you can win prizes. And every Tuesday night, is our show Social Flight Live with some of the most inspiring voices in aviation. For Social Flight, I'm Jeff Simon, Blue Skies.